I'm Soledad O'Brien. Welcome to Matter of Fact. There's a business boom happening in America right now, and Latinos are leading the surge. The statistics are staggering. According to J.P. Morgan Chase, Latinos are starting new businesses faster than any other group. Latino-owned businesses currently generate more than $600 billion a year for the U.S. economy. Despite those numbers, a new report from the Federal Reserve Bank of New York found that Latino business owners are also facing some big challenges, including access to capital. Elizabeth Velez knows the struggle Latino entrepreneur's face. She's a second generation Latino business owner joining the construction company her dad started in New York City back in 1972. It's so nice to have you. Nice to be here. Was your dad supportive of you going into the business to run up a business? I think he was and he wasn't. He was concerned about me coming in, um, being a female in a male-dominated industry, yet he didn't have many other options if he wanted to see his business succeed. I have six sisters, so we're seven girls in our family. It was going to be a woman. It was going to be a woman. Constru he had no choice. Construction is not an industry where you see a lot of women leading. Unfortunately, um, I'm still a little bit of an anomaly. Uh, being a Latina as well as, as, as being a woman in the industry. But I've been around for a long enough period of time that I've been able to uh, make some headway. The uh, Stanford study found that uh, the growth rate of Latino businesses in the U.S. is outpacing the growth rate of all these other groups. Why do you think that is? So we look at trends for a lot of reasons um, in, in the construction industry and then in some of the groups that I work with. I think for um, inspiration for entrepreneurship comes from a lot of areas, but for Latinos and especially, it's where they find their home. It's how they can best support their families. And so to achieve the American dream, they seek to entrepreneurship for that. It's not a surprise to me. When you look down further into the Latina segment of Latinos overall, between 2007 and today, the number of Latina-owned small businesses has grown 87%, which is absolutely huge. Why do you think Latinas as a subset are also really invested in, in owning and, and growing their own small businesses? As a Latina, um, I think I could say from personal experience that we have a vested, uh, we're invested in supporting our families. And in many areas, especially in Puerto Rico, which I, where I do a lot of business and I look at a lot of the boards and the criteria there, Latinas have to support their families, and so they move forward. My grandmother was an entrepreneur uh, back in Washington Heights, back when we didn't even know what the term entrepreneur was. That was to support her family. So that's all sort of like the good news. And then on the bad news side, you see that Latinos are less likely to seek support from, from banks. And I'm always curious, is that less likely to just seek support, or is it that the banks are also less likely to fund them? There's a general distrust in the Latino culture towards banking and, quite truthfully, government programs. And that stems from where they have come from. You, one has to just look at Venezuela and Nicaragua, and even to some extent Puerto Rico, to see those differences. So I think it's a cultural awareness that we have to change. What were some of the obstacles that you specifically had within your own uh, organization that you were able to overcome? Um, I think we're still overcoming those obstacles. Um, the ability for credit uh, and lending is, is still an obstacle. We don't see a lot of crowdfunding and venture capital funding with Latino uh, businesses. We're still kind of feeling the residual effects from some of 2008 and the market downturn. Um, it's the ability to also take on risk and be open to risk. I think a lot of Latinos are a little bit more risk averse um, and a little bit more averse to necessarily participate in government programs meant to kind of push them forward. Some of those very programs are now under assault. What's going to happen? What has to happen to close the gap so that you can grow some more of these small businesses? So diversity inclusion is a, is a phenomenal concept, both on the workforce side and the business opportunity side. Now we, we see, and especially in the last two years, is that it's, diversity inclusion is being somehow conflated erroneously with immigration issues. So our very uh, programs, the, the essence of the programs that exist, even in progressive New York, are under assault. We have to work together to not only support those programs, but also understand that diversity inclusion programs re increase return on investment, increase the bottom line, provide economic opportunities for all members of the community for that forward Latino community that's, that's growing and growing uh, in America. 
Elizabeth Velez, so nice to have you. Thank you.